My name is Yay. Vahit Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Yeah. Okay, Good. sorry about that. Right. I'm, I'm just going right. to adjust this really quick and just put something so I can um, have it more face up. Cool. So Idaho internet connection is horrible. So Boise internet connection is not good, right? Right. I'm in Idaho. We don't have the best internet here, unfortunately. But I do have both turned on. It's really weird. It's 2020. Is that high enough? It's cool. Right there is good. Right there is good. You're good. Right, You're good. Don't do worry. There we go. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Okay. Good. So go ahead and introduce yourself for everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Yeah, so my name is Esther Mendoza. I'm a massage therapist, entrepreneur, singer, writer, um, coming from Boise, Idaho, as we just talked about. And yeah, thank you for having me today. Awesome. So let's dive into it. Yeah. The question that comes into mind is, what is self-awareness? I know we put, we throw that question out or we talk about that, that specific world that, yeah. why do I need to be conscious about what the heck I'm doing? Well, I think self-awareness is realizing who we are, not only without, but within. I think that's the main thing about self-awareness. And not only that, but understanding the difference between judging yourself and being aware of yourself, your actions, your emotions, and who you are as a person. How do I find out who I am? You go in here, and this place here, and this place here, and you sit in meditation, and you listen for whatever comes up. And you start to well, whenever I do that, my name comes up. <laughs> Your name comes up. Well, then there's <laughs> something there. The name is a big, a big thing. Actually, I learned that um, in sound therapy is that name is huge. So our names that we're named with, right, have a huge influence on the way we are as a person. And so the way you hear your name, the way you say your name, the way you grow up hearing your name has a huge influence on how you become as a person and how you relate to your name has a huge influence on who you are as a person too. So that's something to go into for sure. Whenever we talk about this, there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there that they're so busy trying to get their business going. And I'm not talking about the current circumstances and situation. This just yeah. makes it more chaotic, but Generally speaking, entrepreneurs and individuals that are building a business, they're very busy, a lot of activities. They're putting out a lot of fires, a lot of this. Whenever I speak about meditation or going within, a lot of them feel like they're taking that time away from their business and they don't understand how valuable it could potentially be if they have that clarity. So as an entrepreneur and someone who's got that skill, what, what is your recommendations to an individual? Why should they do that? Well, I think it's huge to take the time to really get to know what you want to do. And that time isn't going to take away from your business or job. It's going to amplify it, if anything. It's going to help you get there faster. Because if you know yourself, then it's going to be a lot easier to understand other people. And I think that's what a lot of people forget is the biggest thing about life is knowing yourself first. And then we can relate to others. Because sometimes we completely forget about that. It's like... But isn't we that selfish? Like I'm taking time for myself, but I'm not taking time for like family. So going inside, because a lot of people do get that guilty feeling that, okay, I need, and, and by the way, just to let you know, with meditation, when I did it about like almost 10 years ago, when I started, it was like yeah. the weirdest thing. I fell asleep every time I went inside. It was just like a, a, a one of those night calls that you take when you have cold and it just knocks you out. Like a lot of times I'm like so tired. I'm like, this is amazing. It puts me up to sleep fast. But I learned that that is not the purpose of that. Well, and it can be, though. You, shouldn't, you should just allow yourself to do whatever you do in that. Because sometimes when you first start doing meditation, you want to start asking yourself questions. And you want to start kind of going kind of the opposite spectrum of thinking about nothing. If you fall asleep when you're thinking about nothing, that's okay for a while, right? You're going you're gonna to learn from that. And maybe you need to go into your sleep patterns and actually heal something in that maybe there's some something more to that so i don't think you should judge yourself that's the main thing is like we really need to sit there and observe ourselves like we would a child um you know trying to do the best we can to understand that inner voice that inner child because we all have that inside of us still and that oh, i got a couple i got multiple of those i got multiple childs in there um so, <laughs> so yeah. 
We all so have personalities, you know, that's something huge too that we need to learn about is like, we all have like the egoic side, we have the more spiritual side, we have our inner self side, we have um, the inner child, we have so many sides to ourselves and I think sometimes we forget that we can actually have that inside of us and it's not a judgment or bipolar or anything like that. That's necessarily, that's the way that we um, deal with situations in life and it creates those different personalities. Um, and that's how we need to understand ourselves. Be kind of without judgment, you know, because it's important not to judge others or yourselves. That's hard. It's important, though. It's hard, but it takes time. And if you make the effort over time, I promise you, it takes more effort to judge someone than it does to not judge them. It so really here's a question. To me, there's two types of meditation, or I categorize it with, based on my low IQ. I categorize them in two categories. Oh, no, the first category is the category where a lot of individuals, they say you got to empty it, empty your mind, and there's nothing there. Which to me, that's scary as shit. Like, that's scary <laughs> when there's no thoughts there. Like, yeah. I panic when there's nothing in there. But that's one category. I see a lot of people saying that. Definitely. Then there's the other category of meditation where you empty the clutter and you get clear or you take one goal, one objective or one idea and then you focus on that. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us the difference? Because I've asked a lot of people that, and, I've, and I've got many, many different answers. Not that one is right or wrong, But I feel like when I go and I focus on one item, I want to call it, or one item, it could be a relationship, it could be my baby, it could be my wife, it could be my my business, it could be one goal that I have, whatever the case might be. When I clear everything else that's around it, it's like putting a magnifying glass and I can see it more clearly. When I don't think about anything, this puts me to sleep. This is like relaxation, you want to call it, calming down, and this is just like, I'm not getting anything out of it. Like, I'm not staying alert at this stage. This yeah. stage, or this style, I'm staying alert. What are your some of your thoughts? On that. Well, I don't think there's necessarily like a right or wrong way to meditate, right? So I think there is different methods. Like there's, um, you know, there's ways of doing like a guided meditation where you have a specific way of going into it, where you're you're actually being guided by someone speaking, or you're guiding yourself internally, and that's a way of really dealing with a certain thing that you want to address. Now, what you're talking about with just relaxation, emptying the mind, that's something that's great for just being present in the moment. So allowing for whatever's coming in to just come in. A lot of times you can get messages from your spirit guides, from higher God, from source, whatever you believe in that talks to you when you're in that kind of nowhere kind of zone. And a lot of people love to do things like um, astral projectile in that, in that environment when they're able to just completely zone out and necessarily go to another place they've been in their mind and so that's something that i've been attempting to do is astral projectile i'm still in the midst of it i've been there i've seen let's, like, let's elaborate on that what the heck is that let's say so, I talk to me like i don't know i'm five years old i don't know <laughs> so in the last few years um i've been attempting to be able to astral project my so my subconscious into a realm that i've been in before so say like the oregon coast i want to sit there on the beach where I was before a couple years ago in that same spot, I go into that nowhere zone and I imagine myself there and I'm able to, in a way, astral project my essence there and I can even feel the breeze and hear the seagulls. But it takes some really, like there's a form of letting go that you have to be re really able to do and not question it. And that's where I'm at. I'm like almost there, but not quite where I feel What's like. What's the I'm benefit of me doing that? You're able to go to places you've been before in your mind and in your physical subconscious realm. And so you're able to to really travel anywhere you like that you've been. But what and you're saying, that means I need to understand what conscious mind is, what subconscious mind. Like there's a lot of studying in this whole entire thing. Like it's not, not like just sit there. Well, it's just a matter of trusting yourself. Right. So like when you feel something like your intuition and you're walking around in a public area, and you get a bad feeling from someone, you're following that intuition not to probably go close to them, right? So it's that same thing 
when you're in meditation, following that intuition that you're feeling and just allowing it to be and not being scared or questioning. Because a lot of times we feel that subconscious or other dimension realm, right? But we don't allow ourselves to be in it because we're scared or we're like, oh, this can't be real. This can't be true. I can't feel that or I can't see that. Reality is we don't know what truth is and possibilities are endless. So it's good to just open your mind to reality sometimes and really be present in what you're feeling because, you know, there's things that you go to the grocery store and you want to buy say, a certain vegetable. There's a reason why you feel that need to buy that vegetable. If you go back and research it, maybe it's going to help with your certain inflammation in the body. There's things that our intuition tells us, and lots of times we're too scared to follow that. And I think that's something that we're coming to now. So, How do we apply that in business? You can apply that in business with getting those inclinations where I need to contact that person. I need to send that email. I need to text that client for some reason I feel they need a massage right now they need some coaching they need some sound therapy you can apply that with anything um, and especially when you're out in public meeting people um, following your intuition about giving someone a card even if you feel kind of weird doing it you don't know you know and that's that thing we have to follow that inner self that inner being that is guiding us but sometimes when we trust that we might get hurt so there, there will be a definitely historical vision of what I've done in the past that's going to come into the present. It's going to alter the future because I did it last time. I got hurt. I trusted this girl. My intuition says she's a good person. It turns out not to be. And then now every time, you know, I want to go initiate that, then I'm having, you know, anxiety or I'm, I'm thinking, oh, she could hurt me or this happened or same thing with business. I did it last time like this. So we have those historical visions that sit there so to me, it's like if you can go back with, with going to our subconscious mind, I would eliminate those historical visions or I put, I put a different meaning to those events because yeah. attaching the right meaning to the right event, it's an art by itself. Yes. Well, and separating yourself from whatever happened in the past too because we try to correlate everything to what's happened, right? even from the age of seven, from zero to seven, we're programmed with the subconscious that is still in us now. And that's something with the inner child, healing that inner child and going back to those meditations where you're guiding through with your inner child and you're able to heal that. Because sometimes, you know, there's so many things, layers and layers in our subconscious that we don't even know. Words like the word, I was speaking to a friend today and she said, selfish. And that word just brings something negative, right? But she was saying to me, you don't want, like, we, we need to be selfish in a sense. But I, when I told her, I said, I don't really like the way that word sounds. It's better to say um, taking care of yourself first or things like that. But it's funny how we have these condensation, like these words that just make us feel triggered. And we're asking ourselves, why? Because we're programmed from a certain age to think that we're selfish. A lot of biblical sayings are like selfishness is, you know, so evil, so wrong. And so if you were grown up like I was in the church, you know, we were taught to not be selfish. That was something you never were supposed to do. Um, but now, you know, self-care, self-love, that's the first thing we need to do. And we're learning that barely now in our 30s and 40s and 50s. Um, but it really is so important because we treat others better when we care ourselves first yeah i mean how could you love somebody else when you don't love yourself like that's exactly. to me that's like weird you know yeah. but but i i also don't agree with a lot of times when people go take a holy book and they just take one you take bible for example definition of it is love so how could you how could you exclude yourself from that love yeah so to me it's like when you take one word in one context, in one sentence, you can't, I mean, you know, it just doesn't make sense. You know, the things that I do today with my family, if I would have done that with my friends back in the days when I was single, like that would show selfishness, like two different, you know, same activity, same restaurant, but the way I do it is completely different. So you can't say, oh, this restaurant is good or is bad. It just depends. Am I hanging out with my family or am I hanging out with my buddies? If, I, if I'm hanging out with my friend, my family, I'm hanging out in this section. 
if I'm hanging out with my buddies, I'm hanging. So it's the same thing with a word or a sentence or a vocabulary that we use. It just really depends in one context you're using it. You can't just take it for just that and just say it's bad or it's good. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It's like you have to really understand um, where it's coming from, too. You know, like, where does that where does I even come from? Like, and that's something I do with my coaching clients. Like I break them down. I go back into all the belief systems that we have in our, in our subconscious and in our conscious. And we write it down and we go through and I call it the lies we tell ourselves. And we just go through and I write with them. And then after each lie they're saying, then they put in the real truth of what they actually believe. So, you know, saying, women don't make as much money typically or you know can't be as successful as men truth women can be just as successful that's or more successful that's in right? idaho that but that's what the name. Name. It's like all those <laughs> lies that we tell ourselves <laughs> that even our subconscious tells ourselves we can replace them with the truth and it's just a matter of repetition and actually reprogramming your subconscious to know the truth i keep telling myself i'm really good looking do i have to like change that like are you gonna no, do you're, you're gonna keep getting more and more better looking as you go you just keep telling yourself that I'm yeah, I knew it. I, finally somebody <laughs> agreed. listen you need to have a conversation with my wife you need to have, I will. A, conversation you have, to have a call me up <laughs> no, no i'm serious but, you know i i really i know that sounds hilarious but i really believe that we create our reality by our thoughts and our actions and what we do every day and what you tell yourself really has an influence on your actions and how you create your reality so if you're constantly telling yourself oh my god i look so ugly or why can't i do this then you're never going to feel positive about yourself you know that well, belief with the universe if, if yeah. you don't want it don't even say it. like i i tell people don't even say i'm sick don't say yeah. I'm in it. Like, don't even mention it. Like, nope. yes, you're under infl- You're under the weather, but just listen. You're getting better. Things are happening. This is just. This is leaving my. But just. Th- but but it comes back to the first question that I ask you: is the awareness. If you're not aware of what the hell is coming out of your mouth, that's a problem. Like it you is. gotta be. You gotta. You got. You know. And and I'm not saying you you know keep track of your thoughts, but thinking about your thoughts is not an easy thing to do. A lot of people, that they're like, they freak out. are like, what is that? I have to be thinking about my thoughts. Like, that's crazy, yeah. right? But I guess but that's what it takes. That's what human nature is. That's what separates us from animals and, you know, things like that, is that we actually think about thinking, right? So we're able to separate from different areas in our mind and actually separate from our heart consciousness to our mind consciousness. And that's something else that's amazing once you are able to actually pull like that energy from like, say your root chakra all the way up to your crown chakra. And you're able to actually learn how to move that energy too. Um, A huge thing that I love to do is aligning chakras and bringing that energy to where it needs to be. And that's where I use my sound therapy and things like that to, to bring vibration and, you know, things like that to just help people get to their, to that subconscious level where they don't think and they're just like, Oh wow, that feels amazing. And then they walk out of there and they're like, where am I? I am so in another world right now. And I'm just like, yep. Welcome to being massage drunk. You're in another world for a while. Make sure you take care of yourself for the next no, listen, Just learning about chakras that, that I started that was five, six years ago. And I was like, this is a whole entire world. I didn't even know it existed. I was like, how come they didn't teach this in high school? Like, can somebody right. mention it? Maybe I would have been interested. I'm not saying do a whole entire book on it, you know, do a curriculum. Yeah. I was just like, somebody, one of the teachers would have mentioned there's something called a chakra, Google it, YouTube it, something. Yeah, something. You know what I mean? I'm like, all my life I could have been doing this or I could have been learning about this little by little. And then mm-hmm. I come, I'm at this age, and then boom, they toss it on my lap and they're like, learn this. <laughs> this is good. I'm like, I had all these years that I could have been doing it. You yeah. know? It's like you just pass it on my lap. Everything has its own time. Everything comes for a reason at a certain time. But I think that, you know, just being aware of that right now, you're allowing that to come in. So um, just keep learning. That's all you can do. Like, I'm an endless learner. I I never feel like I'll learn enough. I'm going to learn for the rest of you got to move you from Idaho to to L.A. So you have better reception. And there will be more people. You'll be able to do this thing with a lot. So I've been I, in L.A. Actually, that's where I took my sound therapy class from um, Wayne Perry in L.A. over in West Hollywood. 
and oh, I love LA, but you know what? I am a country girl with a city heart. Like I love the country, but I love the city. Um, so I will always have a home in Boise, but I love having. A, eventually, my goal is to have multiple homes all over the world. That's yeah, what I'm LA, putting. Because of the internet, is a good suggestion for you. It's yeah. definitely it works out the best. But yeah, West Hollywood is about twelve miles, maybe ten miles from where I'm where I'm at right now. My house. Yeah. 10 miles, give or take, that's what it is. But listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule and being with us. I appreciate it. Hopefully, we can do more videos because we yes. talked about some deep, deep topics. Like, these yeah. are not topics that you could talk about in 30 minutes. Like, they really need to be dissected and dived into. Hopefully, we'll get that opportunity down the line. Definitely. You let me know. I'm here. And thank you so you much for taking the time and contacting me. I appreciate it. You got All it. Right. Talk to you soon. Stay safe. Take care, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye.